Oh, that's a... I, I was not expecting this. Come one, come all and gather round. I am Sir Daniel Knight of the Folly. I come with much haste to deliver a message from the king himself. I quote, Welcome to the King's Court, the podcast formed around the Reddit community and dedicated to bringing you the latest news tips and strategies for Wild Rift to keep you informed and up to date. The King has informed me to welcome all of his guests into his majesty's court. He would like all of his guests to know how appreciative he is that they have decided to accompany him on this journey. Today is going to be a different episode. We have the number one Wild Rift YouTuber in the world, according to people. We have It's Stuart today with us. Um, I believe he is a master tier player over on the European server, and he is a successful YouTuber. Without further ado, I guess I'll let him introduce himself. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. I appreciate you uh, inviting me to the podcast. Uh, my name is Stuart. I am. Uh, I'm from the UK. Uh, I'm currently a content creator for XL Esports, which is a UK organisation commonly known in the LEC, which is uh, the PC League of Legends version, like competitive scene. I'm currently Grandmaster, not Master, but it was close. I, I I'll give you that. It was close. I'm currently Grandmaster, and uh, yeah, I uh, currently do my own YouTube and streams, and I focus more on. Uh, more educational content to help out people from uh, from all around the world. That is awesome. Yeah, sorry, I th I don't know why when I did my research, I I think I ran across a video of yours that said master. I could. I, I could <laughs> so good. So well. good. This this interview, I wanted to do more of straying away from the game because Will and I talk about the game all week. What I really wanted to know, like your unique perspective being a content creator um so what is that like how did you start or where, where did you start saying okay i'm going to lock down on wild rift and this is going to be where i you know just start my future career mm -hmm. uh i mean for me i played pc league of legends for about eight or nine years now um so i've kind of had that in my background and ever since really they announced wild rift or i think it was a long long time ago now when they first announced it at their um at their 10 year anniversary event. When I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is this is something that's actually crazy. And I I never actually played a mobile game before Wild Rift before, like ever. I've never played like a, what's the other one's called? Mobile Legends or anything like that. I've never actually played any sort of mobile um, MOBAs before. So I mean, when Wild Rift first came out, it was here in the EU, it was in January, I believe, or just before January and December. Um, I. You know, for me, I felt like I could bring my knowledge over from PC League of Legends into Wild Rift and, you know, help people out, you know, help people that maybe don't really, you know, understand MOBAs that well or don't really understand, you know, League of Legends or the champions that well. I can bring over my knowledge from PC League of Legends into Wild Rift. And, you know, since then, you know, I've kind of really uh, enjoyed Wild Rift, to be fair. It's a bit more faster paced than PC League. It's a bit easier as well because I'm... Not the best on PC League. I hear about Diamond, but um, I don't know. Ever since then, you know, I've been I've been playing mobile games. Since then, it's kind of gone from there, really. To be fair, and then I did my own YouTube. I did my own educational content. Played with a few other people and started climbing the ranks. And I hit Challenger as well a few times. So yeah, it's pretty much gone from there, really. Gotcha. You know, that's that's kind of similar to me. I think I played League of Legends for at least ten years now. I wasn't that good in it. I, I spent a lot more time playing World of Warcraft than anything. So yeah. coming over to MOBAs, it's very mechanically inclined. Uh, if, if your mechanics aren't there, then really you're going to have some you know struggles in League of Legends specifically because there's a lot of uh, clicking to move, yeah. especially if you play AD carry. For sure. um, I peaked gold five support uh, uh, there, but... It was more like it's, it's like exactly like you said, the knowledge that you take from there, you just shrink it down slightly and apply it to a smaller map. And yeah. you have the same thing. You know, there's you can freeze wave, split push, slow push, just some knowing when to rotate is, I'd say, or your macro plays 90 percent of the game. Mm -hmm, for sure. I agree. Yeah, that that's awesome. Um, I used to make a lot of World of Warcraft parody music, so I started to do it. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> with Wild Rift, and uh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'd be pretty funny. But yeah, I mean, you, you compare like World of Warcraft to Wild Rift, it's like World of Warcraft, sometimes you just, you know, you're standing there and you're just fighting and there's not really anything to do. But in League of Legends, you know, you have to dodge, you have to make sure you're you're doing the right things at the right time and everything as well and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's definitely a lot a lot different in that aspect for sure. Let's be fair. You don't have to dodge and you don't have to make sure you're in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Your teammates might be mad at you, but you don't have to do any of that. <laughs> True. You could just stand there the whole game and just, you know, last hit and farm the whole game. Then you might be useful later on, but your team might not like you. So <laughs> I, I played jungle um, because I hate myself. Uh, <laughs> so I just, you know, everybody's criticisms just validate that hatred towards me. So I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, jungle is uh, probably everyone's most hated role, I would say, because everyone just blames the jungler. It seems like whether it comes to League of Legends or Wild Rift, it's always uh, it's always been a classic meme where it's like, oh, jungle death. You know, I died in lane. It's a jungle death, which is uh, quite funny, to be fair. I've died four times in the top lane. Yeah, it's why, why haven't you ganked for me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when the enemy jungler shows up and it's a 2v2, we lose. That's why. <laughs> um, uh, you know, before, this wasn't a question on the list, um, but it just, it, it popped up in my mind. Yeah. Um, something that a lot of people have problems with in the North American server is we saw this influx. A lot of people from South America uh, migrate into Wild Rift from like Mobile Legends, Bang Bang, Arena of Valor, and all these other games. So we're having this influx of people who don't speak English. Um, do you have that problem over in the UK? Some games, I would say that that kind of is a problem. I mean, sometimes if you get more people from one country, you'd see that that language is always spoken. But I think the main thing in Europe anyway is that most people from other countries always learn some type of English anyway at schools and things like that as well. And most of the people you come across does understand English, even if it might be to a very, you know, slim, slim margin. But I sometimes you do get that situation where people don't talk English. Maybe it's like, you know, you got four Spanish players in your lobby and you're the only English one. Maybe they talk Spanish with each other. Uh, things like that but you know when you communicate with them like in english most of the time they they do respond in english as well so i don't wouldn't really say that there's uh, a problem with that but i i can see what you mean with like uh like south america and everything like that as well it might be uh it might be a bit crazy because i know that over in america or north america you lot have had problems with like making with like sometimes you get really high pings and things like that as well when the f game first came out yeah it's it's really weird i actually was super excited for the game to first come out. Then it took too long to come out and I forgot about it. And then I, when I rediscovered, I, I was halfway through like the first season or something. I was like, crap. Um, but yeah. I mean, I don't think it's necessarily an issue that people don't speak English as long as they communicate through pings. Um, yeah. I speak a little bit of Spanish, but like you said, most of the times I'm like, Hey, no Spanish or I don't speak Spanish. They'll be like, okay, bro, no problem. So, I mean, however it works for them, as long as they're playing well, I don't care. Exactly. As long as they carry you, you know, that's, exactly. that's fine. <laughs> exactly. So let me ask, are you most, uh, you know, are you excited about the future of the game? And if so, what do you look forward to the most? Um, I think, I think anyone that speaks about Wild Rift at the moment is definitely very excited for the game. I mean, it's, it hasn't even been a year since it's been released for like us in EU and especially you guys in, in North America as well. I think it's been out for just over a year now for people over in, uh, over in Asia, like SEA and everything. But even so, I, I think the game is is still early days. There's still a lot of champions to come out, uh, a lot of features, which hopefully they'll be adding, you know, you know soon, like some, you know, hopefully some cool things, maybe some like on-screen stuff and everything like that as well. Obviously you've got patch 2.5, which is coming out soon as well. Um, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited, like, like, mo like most people, to be fair. I think um, at times you might feel like, or some people might feel like the game is kind of quote unquote dying, but you can't really say that in my opinion when like the game hasn't really fully launched yet, if that really makes sense, because it, it hasn't even been a year yet. Um, in terms of what I'm most looking forward to, um, I would probably say the esports side of things. I think the yeah. esports side of things already has has kicked off quite well, especially over here in, in Europe. There's 
a full a few like smaller competitions with prize monies which are which are done quite well and uh with origin series as well with the uh the best team going over to the horizon cup that did really really well uh i was actually able to like co-stream that as well and watch it with my community and everything so that was really really fun to do i think that's the main thing is is the esports side of things obviously everyone's going to talk about you know more champions new champions coming out new features but for me it's it's esports that's kind of what brings everyone together is watching esports together and you know having that competitive sort of spirit b uh, between teams and between you know international tournaments as well the classic NAEU rivalry which has been uh, which has been heating up over the last uh, few weeks but uh, no, no for me that's that's the one thing i'm definitely looking forward to i i totally agree uh it's been interesting because na is much better than eu even though we struggle more it's okay <laughs> <laughs> um kind of reminds me when you see the smaller tournaments back when like league really first started you had the esls aems where like yes, moscow five would just roll everybody oh, that's, that brings back some memories that does <laughs> alex yeah. itch and everything as well and ocelot and yeah i remember them i remember I them days still remember the game where Genja played Urgot bottom and they gave him blue buff to start out and just uh who was Edward I think at the time was just roaming the map with Alistar and just oh, yeah. everybody. They were such a good team. It's a shame what happened to them. Have you seen yeah. that uh that uh documentary? No, I haven't seen the documentary. No, what's it what about Moscow Five was it? Yeah, I think I think it's G Bay ninety nine. He does a document about how the fbi destroyed the most dominant team in uh, league of legends moscow five was like a front for uh like some other type of shady business going on really god I, I've never, that's the first time i've ever heard of it to be fair that's quite interesting yes yeah, i think it's about that. an hour it's pretty good um do you think you found your con I think as a content creator i think i think i've still got a kind of uh, a, l a long way to go as a as a car i think i feel like i'm still like starting up i mean i've been streaming on twitch for about like four or five years i would say In my opinion it's still still learning every single day you know being you know playing games and being a content creator and things like that so i feel like you've always got things to learn things to you know do and like your programs and things like that that you have to you know out and everything like that so uh I, I still feel like i definitely have a uh have a long way to go even though it's kind of uh already i guess you can call it kicked off for me in a way <laughs> you know that's that's one thing that i um found really interesting when i started doing it um to learn video editing audio editing I had to, if I wanted to stream, I would have had to get a PC with a capture card and all that stuff because there's no good way to capture video um, on Twitch mobile. Um, so there was so much that actually goes into it behind the scenes that you don't think about. This is giving me a new appreciation for like YouTubers and streamers to where I'm like, I don't want to sit through the ad, but it's if you're putting in the time for the good quality content and it's not costing me money, I'll just let the ad play and uh some revenue that way yeah i think i think that's the main thing that i i have a lot of friends that don't really understand like twitch and you know things like that people that sit down and watch um streamers and everything like that but the way that i look at it is like kind of like what sitting down and watching tv sort of thing it's like kind of people's lives now sitting down and watching twitch like you wake up in the morning you have a look and see who's streaming you watch them because like people who stream on Twitch and everything, the way that I look at it is like they're kind of doing it for free in a way. And then whatever you can do to help them helps them, you know, try and do it full time and try and, you know, make it a living for them sort of thing. So, I mean, I always encourage people to watch streamers and watch YouTube videos and things like that. Not even myself, just anyone really, because because uh, it all helps and all feedback and everything helps everyone, like every single content creator to become better and help them out in the same way as well because at, at the same time you know if you're if you're watching twitch or watching youtube you might be learning things yourself as well at the same time like it might be a certain build or a way to play or how to re reach a certain rank or things like that as well so it, it's always good to to help out the uh, the content creators for sure 
Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, really important to the game. Um, if you didn't have anybody creating any additional content, then I'd, I'd imagine the game is going to become stale yeah. or whatever topic you're talking about in general. So if you were to have more people making more content, yes, that brings in competition, but competition is always good. Uh, we see that in business. You know, uh, Competition typically drives lower prices for the consumer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but but it's a healthy market um at the same time so for me what i've found to be most interesting i started my youtube channel doing top five plays kind of like potato monster and then i really rediscovered my passion for music i've been rapping for like 20 years um (laughs) yeah yeah uh and then I, i come back into it and uh i i found that passion that i lost you know you know so yeah it's you know it's it's pretty good to be fair i mean that's that's the thing with gaming, it like it brings everyone together and it allows you to, you know, create new things and content and things like that as well. And sometimes it it brings back memories as well. I think that's the that's the cool thing about gaming as well. Is that you I... might remember things and do things that you used to do or you know, people you used to play with or used to talk to that when a new game comes out or something like that, you can kind of rediscover that friendship or rediscover, like you said, the the passion for rapping that you used to have. Yeah, you're 100% right. When we start talking about, you know, most of us who play games have been gaming since we were kids. Um, And maybe we spend a little bit more time inside on the internet and all that stuff, but we develop friendships with people that we've met all over the world that we've never even seen in person. But, you know, you'd spend eight to 10 hours with them grinding something out in a game. Um, So sometimes, you know, you got to log back in, you know, you got to purchase a, uh, Activision, or not Activision, a Blizzard Pass or whatever they call it now, a WoW token, just oh, so yeah. log in <laughs> WoW, uh, WoW and run around Orgrimmar or something. So what do you think the game is going to look like a year from now? <sighs> it's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I'm hoping that they they bring some more features to the game. I mean, it could be like very, very small features. Um, I know other games have things like a... Uh, content create a tab sort of thing where you can watch videos from inside the app or watch streams from inside the game as well which would be kind of cool um which i i think most people do want um i think a year from now i i would think that maybe all of the league of legends champions would be on world rift because i think they're trying to schedule two a month at the moment which is looking at okay maybe not that's like an extra 24 okay maybe maybe not a year from now maybe a lot longer than a year from now but <laughs> i i think there'll definitely be a lot more more champions in the game which can be a good thing but also could be a bad thing at the same time i think that's kind of what um the pc version kind of has at the moment is that they have so many champions and so much to balance in you know every two weeks and everything like that which which is a good thing because loads of people can play loads of different champions and metas come up and things like that. But I think that's one good thing about Wild Rift is it kind of brings a bit of nostalgia for me from when I used to play uh, League of Legends and there used to be only a few champions, only a few items. It wasn't really as complicated as what it is now with all the champions that are coming out for PC League, like Vex who just came out and Viego and all these crazy champions that have all these crazy passives and everything like that as well. A bit like Akshan as well who came to Wild Rift. I think they they will bring out more more champions um and i think it'll be a bit crazy probably a year from now with all the new champions and everything but i i still think the game would be be in a pretty good spot hopefully the uh the esports scene grows as well but i think i think the main thing is here from now with all all the champions that they could be releasing it, it could get very very wild indeed i agree i do agree i i want to see more champions released um as a jungler you don't really have that many ap options um i guess you have fizz but yeah, I, I don't know. I think Fizz is permaban. Evelyn, she seemed to not be as picked as much as she used to be. Um, Nunu, but I, I, I've been spamming the crap out of Nunu. He's just super strong. Also fun to play as well. I like playing Nunu. Yeah, just run run into him with a snowball. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's so fun. I think I utilize his ultimate more as a, a zone control. So I'll try to put myself in between you know, like the whoever's on the front line for the enemy team in the back line, just so a zone control so my team can pick off that front person. And if I die, you know, that happens. But, you know, hopefully at that point, we've done enough to win the team fight. Yeah. Thinking about something you said, the game, I, I still don't think it's released in India yet. I, so I think we're technically, we're still in beta, aren't we? Yeah, I think because they're calling the Horizon Cup the 
beta worlds. So they're, ba they're basically not calling it worlds because they're still in beta and it's not like the full release yet. But they said like next year is going to be like the first full season of worlds, uh, which means like probably more qualifiers and hopefully, as you as you mentioned, you know the India launch as well because I know a few people from uh, from India that I talk to and. They have to play on like you know try and play on eu servers and everything like that as well which can be a bit tough um don't really know the whole reasoning behind them not releasing india yet there's probably some reasoning behind it but they've never mentioned it at all but i mean that's that's hopefully one thing you know a year from now that hopefully it is released all around the world and it will have its full launch and everything and as mentioned hopefully some more features and everything will be added as well which would be quite nice yeah, it'll it'll definitely be nice to see a different influx of people into the community. Um, I, I actually have a lot of Indian customers where I work um, at Pepsi, and uh, you know a lot of them are gamers, um, so they're excited for this. Cause we sit there and we talk about it all the time. Um, what annoys you the most when it comes to this video game? I I I don't really like to be uh, negative. To be fair. Um, but I guess one thing at the moment, which they're looking to fix next patch anyway, so it might not be a problem for very long, um, is currently the matchmaking over in EU. Um, I'm not really too sure how it is over in North America at the moment, but sometimes the matchmaking is a little bit wild and it can be a bit all over the place. Uh, there's been multiple content creators that have spoken about this already and multiple uh, high low people in EU that have spoken to you know writers um, about matchmaking and everything like that as well and there's even some situations where like my quote-unquote main account at the moment my account that i use for you know have all the skins on everything like that, i actually can't find any games on there at the moment because mm -hmm. like the matchmaking is just bugged out at the moment which is quite frustrating so i'm kind of playing on my my smurf slash second account you can call it which is a bit annoying because you spend all their money on skins and everything and you can't really find any ranked games so Hopefully that does get fixed next patch. They have said that matchmaking is going to be, you know, rebuilt and everything um, in patch 2.5. So hopefully that's one thing that's fixed. But I mean, uh, other than that, there's there's not really a lot to be fair. Um, maybe toxicity and things like that could be a thing as well, like AFKs and things like that. I think again, they're they're working towards trying to fix that and trying to punish them a little bit more, which they've done already. Um, need to uh, hit the nail on the coffin with that one as well. I think is probably the most annoying part of it. And I get it because you get tilted, you just rage quit. It, it happens. That's something that I'm used to. Um, however, I, I just, I've never liked the idea that it, someone going AFK can cost the whole team their LP. Um, I think if we were to reduce that or remove it, um, maybe give, maybe, maybe give that person a, um, or an what it, honor honor thing or whatever where or the crystal where it doesn't take away the um the LP if you lose. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, the karma one. Um, I I would like to see something like that, just where you're not necessarily punished for someone else's gameplay. Yeah. Um, but I mean, legitimately, things happen. Internet goes out. You know, you lose connection. Your phone dies. Hopefully not while you're playing, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think that's the thing with mobile is that even though people might go AFK or might just like randomly disconnect, is that people the way that you think the way that people have to think about it is people might be playing it out and about. They might be playing it on the train. They might be playing it, you know, at someone else's you know, house or whatever or anything like that. And sometimes, like the mobile network might just die and things like that. And I think that's a that's probably the thing that they're struggling with the most is finding out who are the ones that are actually AFK and rage quitting on purpose and who are the ones that actually have problems. You know, even things like people might not even have two phones. They might even have like a emergency phone call that they have to, you know, pick up and things like that as well. So there's, there's so many different things you have to think about with a, with a mobile game, which are completely different, say, to example, from, from PC League, because PC League is like, you know, if you do actually quit the game, you are, most of the time quitting it on purpose unless you get and you know an internet cut out on uh or anything like that but mobile is a, a whole different game it could be an important text important phone call an app thing that might be happening or something like that so there's a whole different way of looking at it compared to pc
that's actually something interesting that I didn't think about because I don't I don't know how it is in Europe, but most of us don't just hop on the train and go places over here. Um, so, you know, you, one day you're just playing on the train. Next thing you know, you're going through a tunnel and you just lose all cell service. I, I've never even thought about anything like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the same with, with anything, really. If you're in playing it on the car or something, you might be going through like a desert or something crazy like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That, there'd be nothing, no deserts here. But like you go Dead for an zones, area yeah. that doesn't, yeah, you go for an area that doesn't have any internet connection. You cut out and then you're gone for like five minutes and you come back again. There's, there's loads of things you have to have to think about when it comes to, to mobile gaming, which I didn't even realize before. Like I said, before Wild Rift, I never actually played any mobile games before. So you know, coming over from PC League it is a bit different, but they're kind of the things you have to think about when uh, when people might be AFK in your team. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. I, I appreciate you bringing that up. That uh, definitely makes me uh, look at things differently. That'll, that'll give me an avenue to explore later on in a future episode. Um, if you had to play one champion for the rest of your life, who would it be and why would you pick them? Probably say... Jin, if I'm totally honest, because that was kind of my first champion that I actually uh, started playing on, not on PC League really, because I started a long time ago, but when Jin first came out, I really enjoyed him. The first champion that I played on uh, on Wild Rift as well, I think just his his champion design and his skins and everything as well, really, really cool. But another honorable mention is Zyra as well. Zyra is also a very fun, ch- fun champion that I like playing, probably my favorite at the current time, because apparently, you know... A, Currently, Jin's not really as good at the moment, so it's kind of hard to play him. But it, it's hard to pick one, to be honest. I mean, you also got a, another AD carry that people might have not really heard about before, Aphelios on PC League. I do like playing him as well, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that, that he will be coming out soon because he's one of my favorites to play on on PC League. So I, I, it's hard to really pick one out of them, really, to be honest. I think it's, I think it's hard to pick one champion, but... If I was to pick one, it'd probably be Jin, but then I'd kind of feel sad because then I can't play champions like Zyre or even champions like Varus or anything like that anymore. So, a bit of a hard one. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not listen to the last episode because I crapped all over Jin. So, just <laughs> don't listen to it. Um, it no, I mean, Jin, Jin's pretty hard at the moment. Uh, like I said, I mean, when I make my, my tier list and things like that, Jin's always down the bottom at the moment because of how many nerfs he's got, the items that he used to build got nerfed as well, and it's he's kind of in a uh, a rough spot at the moment, but fingers crossed he gets uh, buffed in 2.5. The fingers reason, crossed. <laughs> the reason that I crap on him isn't that he's not a good champion. He's just so stylistically different from all the other AD kids. Yes, yeah, um, for sure. You really have to know what you're doing, it, and it's difficult as play as Drake. Um catching axes in a team fight is extremely difficult when you're trying to dodge everything. So yeah. when it comes to your newer players, put them on the plug and play the jinxes, the ashes, the, um, like you said, the Zayas, especially after that attack damage buff, I'd imagine she's doing a lot more damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so no, that's... I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, Jin with like his whole reload mechanic and things like that, you have to always be careful when you're landing that four shot because even though it does do a lot of damage, it does take a long time to reload and then you don't have as much damage per second as say like Azaya, for example, who can just keep auto attack and then keep using them feathers all the time. Whereas Jin, you have to know when to use your shots at the right time. And then when you reload, you have to peel back and, you know, it, it's very different play styles, I think, with with all AD carries, really, to be honest. I mean, another one, Varus, you, you have to kind of stay back and you his, use his crowd control and his poke. He's not really like an auto attack, really, champion. So, but uh, that, that, I mean, that's healthy for the game anyway. If different champions have different play styles and you've got different people playing them at the same time as well, it's always healthy for the game because, you know, different people might be better on different champions and everything like that as well. Now that I'm thinking about it, you know, the map's shorter, so it's. It, I don't think Jin is as safe when he uses his ultimate as he might be on PC League, just because you have the, you know, existence of these hyper-mobile champions, like yeah. Rakan that could get in there and interrupt it, or uh, Zed that could get back there and just pop him as he's sitting still in his ultimate. Um, I don't know. Uh, if no, yeah, I, I agree. I agree for sure, yeah. If I had to pick a champ, I'm ADD. I can't. I could never pick a character to play for all the time. You know, a champion to play on League of Legends. I couldn't pick which role I wanted to play in. I it's just 
I would start doing good and then I'd get bored and switch to something else. <laughs> um, for me, that would probably be Lee Sin, um, just because you can play him almost everywhere except for AD carry. Um, I've seen, sure. I've, I've seen great support Lee Sins. Um, so something different, <laughs> something, yeah. something different. It's just that damage that, that, that early damage and that ability to, um, just crowd control people with the kick. Yeah. Uh, and I will say it is so I'm a boomer. I'm 31. I'll be 32 this year. So my mechanics are terrible from what they used to be. Um, and I am happy the way they have him set up on Wild Rift because ward hopping is something that's extremely difficult. Yeah. Um, so that safe being able to safeguard behind somebody and kick them, um, so much easier. Yeah, I think I think well what I mentioned before really is that definitely Wild Rift is even though like like you said it's a it's a smaller map it that you know they have redesigned some of the champions and changed a few things to make it easier because. They probably realize that people on mobile might not have, you know, crazy me mechanics or it might be, it's a bit harder because you, you don't have a, a mouse and a keyboard to press all these different buttons and, you know, be very precise because on mobile, you've just got, you know, a movement button and an attack button. And that's pretty much it. You have a few other buttons here and there for your skills. Um, but they definitely have changed a few things. And I think, like you said, the, the Lee Sin jump, which can be annoying at times because he can dash around pretty much anywhere he wants to at any time and do some crazy stuff. I mean, I've seen some crazy plays with uh, with Lee Sin, but yeah, Lee Sin support is definitely a new one. I haven't heard of that one before, but <laughs> maybe I might see it in the in some of my games soon. Who knows? After this, we'll get a VPN. <laughs> I'll queue with you. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Um, so I guess moving on from that, you know, um. There's a lot of things. The world's the world's kind of in a crazy place right now with COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, so, what do you find brings you happiness? You know, this could be something in the games. It could be something in real life. What truly brings you happiness that keeps you moving forward day to day? Um, I, in life, I've always been a very, uh, I guess you can call it a selfless person. I've always kind of focused on. Uh, making others happy which kind of make me happy at the same time as well which is kind of why I started like content creation and educational content and things like that as well uh, when, when people come into my you know twitch chat or comment on my youtube and things like that and say like oh your video helped me reach this rank or oh you know you've helped me do this or thank you very much and things like that you know that that, that always brings a, a smile to my face sort of thing um I don't really focus on myself a lot, which obviously can be a bit of a downside at times as well. But as long as, you know, I'm making other people happy and I'm making other people smile and helping people improve and things like that, that's that's kind of what makes me happy. And I've always been like that as well throughout the whole of my life. Um, but yeah. I'm, I'm very similar. I, you can almost say it's a detriment with how much I guess I'm a people pleaser. Um, lately, I've been a little bit more focused on myself. But, you know, when... You get, I, I intentionally started my YouTube channel to kind of highlight plays from Reddit. Um, this, the, just like asking people, hey, can I use this in the top five clip? If I narrate it, break it down, slow down the team fight and all that stuff. Um, and a lot of times people are happy to see that you or someone took an extra minute to say, oh, that was really cool. Or um, thank you, or someone took my video or something that i thought was really cool and agreed with it and built upon that yeah like someone acknowledges you sort of thing and like recognizes you in a way yeah absolutely and then you grow that that's how you that's how you grow that community you know if you i guess as humans we're typically a little bit more selfish so when you give back from a place of like hey i want nothing in return um you build a stronger bond with people and you start to build a community that might not have been there before and at the same time you know i obviously i'm thinking more of a business mind business mindset like hey if i can grow this youtube to a certain amount i can start monetizing it and then all that stuff which allows me to move away from necessarily maybe my day job um into highlighting more and giving back to the community more and if they win and i win then it's a great situation forever mm -hmm. yeah I, I totally agree it's it's always nice at times to to recognize other people and you know like you said give back as well because sometimes all things and like like you said with covid and that as well like some things all might all might seem 
you know, doom and gloom and things like that, but there still are uh, still are good people out there, and there's still some uh, some light at the end of t- uh, at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Um, so, what are some of the unique challenges that you've had to overcome in your path to being a creator? Um, I think the main thing is kind of learning all the different programs and everything that you uh that you have to use to kind of like edit your videos make thumbnails things like that as well and to be honest i i still haven't mastered it i think it's like like i've said before i've, I've still got quite a long way to go i feel like as a content creator loads of things still to learn uh, about content creation and being a content creator but when I first started up with like Photoshop and Premiere Pro and programs like that, I'm like, what What the hell is all these buttons? What does this do? What does this do? Um, which kind of took a bit of time, to be fair, to get used to and kind of understand and everything. It's like when you export a video, like what what's bit rate and what's this and, you know, all these numbers and everything and what you have to understand. It, it can be a bit confusing at times, but when you watch a few, you know, videos and everything like that, which is why YouTube is such a great thing. You know, you can watch videos that people always explain stuff all the time. It might not even be to do with gaming all the time. It could be, you know, something simple, like maybe how to cook food or something like that. You know, YouTube's always, always there to help you out. But yeah, I think the main thing for me was the, uh, was all the, all the programs that I needed to, to learn and everything and being kind of, you know, committed as well. Cause you know, being a content a content creator is not easy for sure. Like you have to kind of dedicate a lot of time and you know a lot of days to making videos and coming up with content and things like that as well. So yeah, I think they're the, they're the main things. That that was that was part of what was difficult for me was learning. So I I knew Photoshop because I always did Photoshop. Like I spent I, I used to do Sony Vegas a lot, um, Cool Edit Pro back in the day for. Um, recording audio um so it was just like jumping from technology of 15 years ago to technology of today which it's a lot easier in a sense but you still have to relearn it yeah um the other part that what is tricky for me was actually learning how to monitor my analytics on youtube um which videos are doing better why would they be doing better um starting to look at other creators whether it be video games or somebody like uncle roger who does the uh rice cooking uh yeah i know who he is yeah i I watch him quite a lot yeah Yeah, he's a he's a funny one (laughs) what do they do differently do they see something you know or obviously their content's different but look at when you start looking at okay how did they edit this video how do they move the b-roll in just all this even pro guides for example pro guides does phenomenal video editing um, so looking at what they do and how can I adapt that to my style and learning that, um, as well as like getting to buddy and, um, just working on my retention rate, learning that, Hey, I need to break the video or the visual up so that it's not just paint drying on a wall. It's, yeah. It's other, it's other things to engage people to keep them watching the video. There's so much, like I said, back in that you don't know until you start doing it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, sometimes you can, you know, you, you can always just start off by doing things simple and everything like that whilst you're learning everything. But I, I think the main thing in this day and age is that so many things are like influenced off social media and trends and things like that as well. It's like, you know, if something was to like, you know, if you was to put, a, I don't know, like a tweet or even TikTok nowadays, which is blowing up as well. Like if you used to put one thing out there that was to completely blow up and you was to start a trend and everything that that kind of kickstarts, you know, your whole content creation or even anything, to be fair, it can kickstart your whole career in a way. You know, it's just, you know, one little thing that can that can make a, a big difference if it's, you know, something as simple as. I don't know, like a dance or something like that, or you know, or a tweet or something, or even memes as well, which are which are quite popular nowadays. But anything that you can kind of get trending that you can kind of put out there that kind of you know pops off sort of thing, and then that kind of you know kick starts and then you can kind of you know grow your career from there and grow your uh, grow your audience and your community from there, really. With that being said, how what do you think plays more into it, quality or quantity? Um, if you're putting out a lot of 
different lower quality videos, like you said, or, or tweets or whatever, you know, you never know what's going to hit and take off. Or do you think the slower route of quality would be better in the long run? When we start talking about people like Jordan Peterson, he says uh, anything uh, worthwhile isn't typically expedient. Um, so it takes I guess it takes a while. I, I think I would rather put out something better quality than lower quality and a bunch of it. Yeah, I I think they both work hand in hand with each other. Um, I think nowadays, and specifically talking about YouTube and Wild Rift, uh, is very dependent on who brings out the video first. Who is the first person to make a video? And that kind of then springs into action as like, who's searching for the video and things like that. You know, Pete, when, when a new champion comes out, for example, uh, I'm going to name a few people, um, which I, which I'm really close friends with though, who are, who are also content creators, uh, Hell's Devil, Darkbreaker, Excoundrel, people like that. Um, you know, it, even though we're all kind of, I guess you can say competing, I guess you can say, I don't really like that word, but I guess you can say competing. Um, I, I think the main thing, is it's like who is going to be the first person to bring out like the champion guys which sometimes might not be like you said it might not be like the quality might not be good or the breakdown of things like that might not be good but when people are searching for that champion like when it hits midnight or when it hits whatever time the champion comes out people are going to be searching on youtube when it comes out they're going to be like okay what's the best build you know what's the best loadout how do what, how do I play this champion? What are the skills and things like that? And people don't really, you know, I'll be totally honest. Some, most people don't really look at the the game itself. They don't really read through all the all the description and things like that. People like to actually watch videos. They learn more from watching videos than actually, you know, um, reading and things like that as well. I I think that's that's a big thing that kind of sways more into uh, quantity over quality, um, but. I don't really believe in, you know, like you said, like bringing out something that might be worse and you could put in a little bit more time to bring out a better quality video. I don't, I don't think it's ever good to bring out something that's bad quality. Um, but in terms of getting out there and being the first person to do, you know, certain content and things like that, sometimes us in the EU, like I know Hell's Devil, for example, he stays up quite late um, to do like videos and things like that. So sometimes it, it can work well for you um but you still have to have the quality there as well at the same time you still have to do your research about the champion and understand what you're talking about and things at the same time that is one beautiful thing about playing league of legends for so long is you have that knowledge of the champion so when it comes yeah. over it's like okay what are the little bit differences and then i can just go on this you know rest of this knowledge that i have so you would say picking a good middle ground is is yeah for sure yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I started making the videos and then I realized, you know, there's a lot of people that make video content and I personally listen to podcasts all day because I work out in the field, like in uh, convenience stores and all that stuff. Um, so I never, I don't, I'm not in an office where a boss is constantly watching over me. So I'll say I, I consume like 20 to 25 hours of podcasts a week. Um, so I started searching for it and I couldn't find anything and then I was like cool I'm gonna start one um not knowing what I was doing not understanding any of it I didn't have any background in you know podcasting like digital media production um and then so uh, that that led me to the idea of like kind of like the YouTube channel like I I started it before but I didn't know, really know what I was doing so I did a lot of research um one group that i came across was think media and they say don't don't wait until you're ready to start start yesterday um post post whatever you have post the bad videos this way you can learn look back and grow from there mm -hmm. um so if anybody out there is listening that wants to start um start today it doesn't have to be great it probably won't be great but it'll be awesome to see your growth in three months six months nine months a year from now yeah, I, I I totally agree with that. I mean, I think that's exactly the same with uh, with content creation as well. As loads of people come up to me and say like, "Oh, uh, you know, what, what should I do? Where do I start?" Sort of thing. You know, it it starts from you know you doing it. Like you you have to learn. You have to you know do things that sometimes you might have to take a risk and things like that as well. But 
I think I think one thing that you pointed out as well was like being different is also very very good as well. Like you know, sometimes people don't want to watch the same content over and over again, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Being different is is quite important as well because if you can bring something new to the table that people haven't done before, then people you know new people will come and watch you for for your content sort of thing. But no, I think the, the main thing for for content creation is uh, yeah, like you said, just. To, to just start today you know don't don't doubt it don't think about it in your mind or anything like that you know if you if you have the obviously it's hard sometimes you, you might not have the right equipment but if you do have the right equipment and the right programs and everything you know it's always best to to start off straight away because as you said you know even if you put out something little you know someone might watch it and then they share it and then they might share it to someone else and things like that as well so it's it's always like a an ongoing like cycle sort of thing that might um might help you out in the long run absolutely and especially if you go the youtube route um my most viewed video is a short it's a ezreal short and it's got like 924 views um so i never expected that to blow up the way it did um but behind that it's one of my top five series it did like 165 and i was so happy i was so happy when i got my first sub and then like i plateaued at nine and I was just sitting there so distraught. I'm like, man, all this work for nothing. Because, you know, even though it might be, might not be the most polished, it's still a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. To learning. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I got hit 10 and I called my buddy. I was like, we did it. We did it. <laughs> um, and then we're sitting at 25 now, but I haven't really done too much with it as opposed to um, venturing off because I haven't really felt like it's my calling or my niche um i'm not i'm not as good as i want to be but yeah, i don't yeah. know if that means me giving up or if um maybe maybe taking a different route yeah i i think motivation is a is a big thing as well that that people need to find as well especially with with content creation is that if you have the motivation there and if you can you know, have a reasoning for getting up in the morning and doing videos and recording and things like that. I, I think that's that's always a big thing as well. I mean, fun, funny story about me actually. I actually did a. Um, I've I've had multiple YouTube channels in my life. Uh, <laughs> very very funny ones as well. Uh, I actually started a YouTube channel a long long time ago now, um, where me and a friend. I I was just sitting on my laptop. I didn't have anything. I didn't have a computer at the time. I just had a crappy old laptop. Uh, and me and my friend, this this will tell you how long ago it was. Uh, me and my my you know, my best friend played uh, Call of Duty World at War custom zombie maps, and uh, that, that I mean it kind of you know it did I it kind of guided that I didn't actually go forward with that to be fair because we were actually doing really well. We were just like doing kind of reviews on every single map with custom zombies and things like that, and, and that was on like a, a terrible terrible like that. I I look back at it. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, the sound quality was terrible. The video quality was terrible. Like, everything about it was terrible. But at, at the time, you know, it, it was fun. And I think that that's one thing as well. It's like, as long as you're you're having fun with what you're doing, you know, and you, you do what you need to do to, you know, kind of share the content, um, get people watching it, you know, have a reason for people watching it as well. I, I think that's a big thing as well. But that's that's one funny story that that people might not uh find, might, might not know about me. So that's kind of where my uh my YouTube career kind of started. It's Stuart, the Call of Duty player. <laughs> I no, still do play Call of Duty to this day as well. So always been a game in my heart. It's it's interesting, right? Because you know, I I I'd imagine as an artist yourself, you probably have this uh, thing where you look back on the work that you've done. And you're like, Oh God, it was terrible. It was terrible. It's stupid. I hate that. I messed that part up. But at some point you have to be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to post it. Um, so when you look back on your old content, you know, we're looking back through time. So we have this. So back in the day, your call of duty video might not have been terrible for the time. Um, yeah. With my older music, I listen back and I'm like, God, I would do this so much differently if I did it <laughs> today. Um, and that's just the fact that I've had more time to perfect it over over the years, um, or the the technology is so much better. Yeah, I I think that's a crazy thing as well as the technology has gone so fast, like so quickly. Like I'm I'm 25 now, and it's crazy how 
much like I, th I think I might have done the Call of Duty videos like 10 years ago or something and seeing how crazy everything is now and how you know even mobile gaming for example I've never imagined playing a mobile game you know 10 years ago when I first started you know doing YouTube and I started doing Twitch and everything like that I used to play on my PC all the time and now I'm here you know playing mobile games and making content off of mobile games which kind of feels a bit surreal to me but it's you know it's kind of cool at the same time it shows you how how far you know mobile games come over the years that is actually something that my best friend and i talked about because i told him mobile gaming is the future of technology um just for the fact that you see like look at nintendo move Nin nintendo's always been great with game boys the the handheld technology it did so well that you saw um playstation try to do it all the other companies try to do it um not necessarily so successful uh, but then you see less, less intense requirements for a phone and you have to have a, in, in modern day world, you have to have a phone anyway. Um, yeah. even, even in a quote unquote third world country, um, you, you still pretty much required to have a cell phone. Um, and just the fact that you can play games on it now, just, it, it goes literally hand in hand. Um, and I was I was telling him this because he I don't know if he doesn't believe me. Um, I just see the way that mobile games have progressed over the years. You know, you went from that Candy Crush crap to Wild Rift, Call of Duty Mobile, all these actual yeah. really good games um, that are easy to access. It gives more access to people across the world. Uh, he he actually ran across a video and it was like the most downloaded and played game that you've never heard about and it was actually arena of valor um Damn. yeah it was like 100 million downloads or plays accounts or something like that so um it, he's he i think at that point he started to realize that i was right of course so paul if you're listening i'm always right <laughs> i i i mean another point of that of that as well as i jamble on as i do um <laughs> the the new steam thing as well that they've got coming out as well i can't remember for the life of me what it's called but it's a, a handheld device where you can play any steam game on handheld a bit like kind of i guess you could say like the nintendo switch but obviously the steam library is is has so many games it's absolutely ridiculous i can't remember for the life of me what it's called but i mean it just shows that company are look companies are looking more towards you know handheld and and devices which allow you to go wherever you want and play wherever you want more than just you know sitting at home and playing games now which is uh which is crazy to think about if you think about you know like like you said like you know all them years ago when it used to be like you know ps1 ps2s and things like that as well you had like the odd handheld here and there with like game boy but now it seems like all country what all countries all companies are you know moving more towards you know handheld and more mobile devices absolutely um, and, and like the fact that you can now play all those games on PC through um, ROMs, um, insane. Do you ever watch like speed running? Um, I I watch here and there. Like they have like the the yearly competition thing. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called uh, uh, a on a Twitch. G EQ, awesome games done quickly. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I, I watch that from time to time, but I only really watch games that I've really played before in the past and things like that. But I watch it from time to time. Yep. Um, and I like I don't dive too much into it, but sometimes it'll be interesting to see how they break the game. And you look at this old style as like they'd be playing like Super Mario on Nintendo sixty four, and it'd be a, oh, yeah. a VHS recording the screen, and it would <laughs> mail it in, and they'd um posted on the on the thing after a review to the fact that now you can live stream it and you can have these timers that'll tell you you're two seconds off the world record it's just phenomenally mind-blowing mm -hmm. going from this old analog yeah like analog style to this highly updated digital world it's it's amazing what technology yeah. is doing for the gaming community it is yeah it's it's pretty surreal that we have things like you know Twitch <laughs> and you people spend you know all their lives on now really you know streaming and then watching and uh, it's pretty surreal to think about to be fair <laughs> when you think about it i think with the pandemic i think youtube and twitch exploded significantly in the amount of content being consumed because everybody's locked inside 
Yeah, that's, I think that's another big thing as well. I mean, th- I th- I think even before that as well, I think it was still you know cr- you know huge, but I think the the pandemic definitely you know I guess made people realize as well, and it's like the the whole thing with like you know working from home and things like that, and you know what technology can do to you know when things like you know crazy things like this do does happen, that technology can actually help us out, you know, work from home or you know do stuff at home and everything like that as well. It's it's Kind of crazy to think about actually <laughs> it's really really crazy yeah um what what's, it sucks because like at work i can't really work from home because i have to like deal with customers all day I mean, obviously some yeah obviously some works you can't physically like if you're working in a shop or something like that but i think i think like some like work companies and everything realize that not everyone needs to travel into work and you know work in an office all the time you know people can actually work from home and there's a technology now where you can communicate with people from all around the world and you don't even need to be in an office or you don't need to travel there anymore sort of thing absolutely i can work from home it's just going to be very bad so gps (laughs) GPS knows where i'm at (laughs) Uh uh moving on from that um i guess we'll skip a couple questions because we're coming up on an hour um, what do you think is the best moment that you've ever had in the game? Wow. Um, I think everyone loves a comeback, to be fair. I think comeback's the most satisfying thing about a game, and especially a MOBA like like League of Legends, which makes it kind of unique really to uh to other games. I guess you can you can kind of say the same with like football or soccer or whatever you want to call it and things like that as well. But I think you know. Getting coming coming back from being behind and being down and out and seeing your team like kind of giving up, and then you coming back and you like you know kind of putting everything aside and being able to group up and you know come back and actually win from like a sometimes I've come back from like ten thousand gold deficits and things like that. That's probably the uh, I, I think I would say probably the best you know moment from the game for sure. My answer was going to be different, but I think I'm going to go with your answer because that's my. <laughs> <laughs> the best ones are when like the enemy team's like oh you suck don't you and then like 10 15 minutes later after you decided to stick it out you're, you're just like oh you guys suck don't you <laughs> How do those yeah kind of kind of karma bites you in the ass sort of thing you know yeah absolutely um uh, uh, what what champion do you want to see come to the game next or champions i guess um, we pick three yeah, I, I I mentioned um Aphilios before. Um for a quick quick story actually. I know we we I keep talking on, but I actually used to be a a support main back in PC League. I was actually always a support main, but I kind of transitioned into to AD carry because um because obviously the game was a bit easier and things like that. But I've always played like bot lane AD carry slash support sort of thing. Um I'd really like Nautilus to come to the game as a support. Um, mm-hmm. I think he brings quite a, quite a lot to the game and could be really nice, especially with all these enchanters at the moment that are really really strong. And for AD Carry, as mentioned, Aphelios is a, a very unique champion that doesn't really have skills. It's more based on what weapons he chooses at the right time, which is a very very unique playstyle. But a playstyle that I I quite enjoy playing. Play a lot of Nautilus mid lane. Uh, <laughs> back before love it. UNB. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, Pre- so prevalent in League of Legends. Um, um, as far as Aphelios, I could never figure out how to use him. Um, I tried and I tried, and it's just so complicated for my old brain. Um, but you know, he in a way he's very different, but he still plays very similar to your just attack damage carries, where you're you're clicking or you're you're pressing the button to do most of your damage, as opposed to uh, lining up skill shots and all that stuff. So. Mm-hmm. Um, after, see, after knowing how Riot likes to um, release champions into this game brand, um, I would hate to see what Aphelius, Aphelius is ultimate will do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite cool, actually, that they've got, like, some changes and everything they make from PC League into Wild Rift. I mean, at, at the current time, they currently, the quote-unquote leaked champions at the moment that are coming out, um, which is could be kind of interesting is uh caitlin jace and i can't think of the third one for my head vega um because of the um 
the new arcane event there were some people that like data mined into wild rift and kind of came up with them leaks and everything like that from pictures and everything that they saw so that could be quite interesting we have to wait for 2.5 for that one but um i mean yeah at, at the moment they're currently like bringing out two champions every month which i think is a pretty decent amount to be fair you don't want to bring out too many champions at the same time because otherwise it gets a bit too overboard and everything but i think two champions a month and depending on what they are um it could be good for the game or it could be you know really really bad for the game if they're completely broken as you said <laughs> since you're an 80 80 carry main um obviously you know what uh caitlin does in league of legends um she's she's known as a lane bully um yeah. early range do you want to describe to the newer players who don't know about her like what you find or or how you think she's going to play do you think she's going to come in and take over do you think she's going to be a dud when she comes what do you think um uh, i think the main thing at the moment is it depends on the items i think some champions at the moment are not really too strong because the right items are not even in the game at the moment and some items are a little bit different but i mean for for caitlin she she has like the longest range out of any ad carry in the game or in pc league but it will be the same in wild rift as well which makes it so then she can you know she can play safe in lane or she can like you said be a complete lane bull bully and just keep auto attacking all the time especially you know during team fights and things like that, you can kind of sit back and, you know, auto attack all the time. And he's, she's more focused on them auto attacks, not really them, you know, them abilities. So items like Solari Charge Blade, which is probably the most popular AD carry item at the moment with like these more, you know, AD carries that like to use their spells wouldn't really work too well. So I don't know if Caitlyn will be good or not. It's kind of, it's really, really hard to tell with new champions. I mean, I always like to predict if a champion is going to be good or not, but I think it all just depends, you know, on their scaling and what damage they're going to do. And you always have to test stuff beforehand. But I think it should be should be quite good for the meta because she'll she'll bring a different a different play style to to other champions. Because at the moment you're seeing in all these hyper carry late game scaling champions. But you know, with Caitlyn, you know, you can be that lane bully and you can bully out champions. You know, like Kaiser, like Vayne, like Jinx. You like to you know scale into the late game so it could bring definitely uh something a bit different to the table i think with her she's it's really interesting because when you at the lower levels her her q or her first ability pilt over peacemakers is extremely strong uh for poking out but then it just does no damage later compared to her auto attacks she's one that her skills in the later game do less damage so it's less beneficial to use them but her traps provide so much zone control i can awesome. imagine yeah i i was just, yeah, i didn't even think about that to be fair yeah thinking about like dragons and everything and rift heralds like what's so important at the moment in wild rift is all in team fights like if you can put a few traps around the dragon and everything as someone walks into it and then you, you use the passive to get that headshot and do that crit damage oh that could be uh that could actually be pretty disgusting <laughs> yeah, i <laughs> could actually be pretty crazy I think she's going to do great when she first launches. Um, if you had any advice that you would give to a newer player just starting the game, what would it be? Um, if you're if you're just starting World Rift, I think the main thing to note is, you know, kind of watch videos. I guess in a way was the biggest advice that I would give, which is kind of what I did when I first started. Uh, playing League of Legends like a long, long time ago. There wasn't really a lot of content back then, but I kind of had to uh, had to make do with what videos were available at the time. Um, yeah, I think watching videos is really important. Obviously, you know myself, and there's loads of other content creators out there that can that can help you out if you want to learn like a certain role or a certain champion and things like that as well. Um, I think always playing with friends is important as well. Um, it's always nice to play with a friend that knows how to play the game that can teach you along the way as well. Um, that's what I did when I first started PC League of Legends. I played with a few other friends that I played the game for already like a year or so. And they kind of brought me into the game. They say, they say like, look, I, I still remember this story, actually. They were like, look, you need to play this game. I was like, no, no, I'm not playing it. This looks terrible. I This game looks trash, you know, everything like that. And I played the game and I got addicted for the next, you know, eight, nine years. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it always can be daunting at times, like learn a new game and kind of, learn about because there's so many things to league of legends that people don't don't really know but 
you know, watch videos, play with people that know how to play and play, you know, they might even not know how to play, you know, play with, you know, people that you enjoy playing with and, you know, just have fun. And then from there, you're, you'll probably get addicted like everyone else playing League of Legends. <laughs> to be fair, your analysis was right. The game did look like crap back then. <laughs> that was a long, long time ago. They probably looked good, like you said, at its time. Like the same with like videos and things like that. Probably looked good for its time. <laughs> there, there are people like me out there saying, uh, how do you find friends to play this game with? So, Because <laughs> I have none. Uh, moving on. Uh, That's a bit this, dark. <laughs> this is a question, and I, it's, it's not me. I didn't ask this question for myself. Cause, but I mean, I mean, I might be an emerald, but what is the secret to not being hard stuck emerald? And I'm just asking for a friend um get good uh i think that's that's the main thing i get no no on, i mean on, on a on a more serious on a more serious note um it's it is hard to especially a game like wild rift where most people i feel like have never really played a moba before have never played you know league of legends that sort of style before they might have played vainglory or arena valor or any of them games before they might not have played league before um, I think the main thing is just you know stick to something that you're you're good at at that rank, um, you know champion tier list and things like that don't really mean too much at that rank. I think the main thing is just like you know focusing on yourself, making sure that you watch your own replays, you learn what you're good at and what you can kind of improve on as well, um, and playing champions that you're good at as well. You know, there's no point you know finding out that I don't know like maybe I said that you know, Varus is S plus tier, but you might be better on a champion that might be in C tier, for example. You know, at, at that rank, the tier lists don't matter too much. Obviously, they do help out. Um, but it's always better to play something that you're good at instead of playing something that you might not be as good at, but might be, you know, higher up on the uh, on the tier list. So I'll say that's the main thing. So obviously watch, watch videos and things like that as well and kind of, you know, learn yourself. Always focus on yourself. That's that's one tip that I always, you know, say to people. Don't focus on what anyone else is doing, you know. Focus on yourself, which is the uh, the main thing about any game, really. Um, being an Emerald as a jungler is I'm often pulled up more. I don't know if that's my MMR or if it's the lack of junglers in the game, but I'm often playing with diamond players. Um, and at this point, my ma uh, my mechanics aren't nearly as good um, playing against someone who knows how to play at a higher level than I do. So I've resorted from playing Lee Sin to the uh, um, Amumu to champions that are easier to play. But yeah, easier for, to execute sort of thing. Exactly, until I understand how to play at a higher level. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely uh, like one thing that people might see these crazy plays or crazy clips of a champion that's like, wow, I, I really want to do that, you know, take Lee Sin, for example, but then you actually play the champion, you're like, wait, it's actually not that easy to play the champion. So, you know, you, you got to do your research on, you know, on the champions and, you know, what you're good at and things like that and play, you know, what what you're comfortable with because at the end of the day you know there's many there's loads of people on pc league for example there's like people that have reached you know challenger with like teemo only on pc league of legends and I, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that was to happen you know again on pc league i've seen people climb to challenger just playing master Yi with their match history you know things like things like that can happen you know sometimes it might be boring playing the same champion but you know if you want to climb and if you're serious about it then focus on you know who you're good at it doesn't really matter you know about tier lists or anything like that as long as you focus on what you're good at and you know you improve yourself then you know it, the climb will come over time that's something i 100 percent agree with and what i think what is a major uh benefit or addition i guess uh moving towards that positive climb is being more comfortable with your champion. If you're spreading your games out over 30 different champions, for example, um, you're going to be less confident playing that matchup. Whereas if you know your champion hands down, you're like, okay, this is where my item spikes are. This is where my power spikes are. I can do this in this situation. You're going to be a lot more confident and then you're going to be able to put that enemy on their back foot. And it's harder to lose a game from a winning position than it is to win a game from a losing position. Yeah. I, I, I always say that as well. You know, it's, 
It's always better to play something, even though you might not be in the best matchup. It's always better to play something you're good at than to try and play a counter to the enemy champion, but you might not be as strong as it. Like at the end of the day, you know, you need to play what you're strong and what you're strong with, you know, what you're comfortable with. And even though you might be in a losing matchup, you will know the mecha- you will know the mechanics and you will know, you know, the limits to your champion to you know when to go in and when not to go in and things like that as well. And, and absolutely, and that is something that's important if you do pick into that losing match because you're not necessarily comfortable playing that counter. Lose gracefully, don't feed, do your best to concede the lane. Yes, you're going to lose. Everybody knows this from the champion select. That's okay as long as you don't give up more resources than you have to. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of how I see it. Gracefully lose. Try not to give up the kills. Yeah, Will asked me last episode if you're playing a top laner against a longer range top laner like a Vayne or a Teemo, how do you win? You don't. You get pushed in. It's going to happen. You wait until later after you unlock some skills, become more tanky. Then you go in and work on trading. But in the beginning, it's it's okay to lose. It's okay to lose as long as you don't give up more resources. Um, if your jungler constantly has to give you attention as opposed to going to the top lane matchup that's going to be a winning matchup um, where we'll snowball the game that's actually worse for your team as a whole so lose ping the jungler hey go top go bottom i'm going to lose this matchup um, and then work on playing for the mid to late game yeah i agree for sure Okay, going on to some prize questions, some questions that I didn't send over to you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> no, it's it's all good. I promise I, w- I won't, uh, won't lead you down a dark path. <laughs> um, doing some research, uh, your most successful video has been your Challenger Top 20 Zaya video, and it's currently sitting at 14,000 views. What were your initial thoughts when it first caught traction and people actually started to pay attention and follow to uh, follow you? Um, I, I think the main thing with a game like League of Legends is people always want to watch the highest content. You know, they always want to watch someone that is good at the game. Um, I think that's the main the main thing. You know, if if you're if you're not good at the game, you know, people might watch you in terms of like you know your entertainment and things like that. Um, I think the main thing about that video when I, when I first got into it was like, you know, you can climb the ladders quite easily in wild rift. I, I feel like climbing like the champion ladders, like in terms of champion, like skill and, you know, the champion leaderboard doesn't really like in, in my personal opinion, anyway, it doesn't really say that you're especially like good with the champion because you can kind of just, you know, get points over time. It doesn't show you like your win rates and things like that. Um, but showing that you're like challenger and you're playing a champion and you're being in, you know, top 20 and things like that. Um, I think that's the main thing. And the main thing that I do with, with my videos videos as well is I, I always like to, to break down why I do certain things and like kind of help people out at the same time as well as, as doing the video, you know, with the build and everything like that as well. So so yeah, not only you you get in, you know, the, the challenger gameplay sort of thing, which I think most people want to see. They want to see like the best and highest tier gameplay to see, you know, how these games are different to like my Emerald games, for example. Um and yeah, just just you know, having someone like Zaya, who's obviously one of my favorite champions that I played a lot when she first came out, um, and reaching quite a high rank with her, you know, not only on the uh the champion leaderboard, but also the um the uh the ladder itself like the ranked ladder itself i thought oh it's actually a pretty good idea to kind of go over my thoughts about zyra and how i can help other people reach the same rank with the same champion see we want to look at the top tier plays um top tier players like I, I watch a lot of outsider wild rift he's really good um but we if we started copying what the pros not the pros but you know the higher ranks do it doesn't always translate into like gold or bronze or silver yeah i agree yeah so what works in a higher a higher rank may not work in the lower one so at the same time yes we want to watch what they're doing but you still got to i would imagine watch content where you're at like like i said pro guides does a lot of good videos on what um champions are good for what elo um 
So that's interesting. No, I'm just I, I I was going through your video and I wanted to compare the uh your your most successful video versus your least popular video, which is your Wild Rift Rundown, and sitting at 80 views. What do you think makes the big difference in the viewership? Do you think it was quality at the time? It's it's an older video. Um, do you think it's like you had subscribers at the time or less people paying attention and eventually you got to the point where you had more subscribers more people paying attention so it was easier to use that as leverage to get higher viewership um i mean i case of what was so there's not actually a lot of zaya gameplay out there on, on youtube and there's not really a lot of people that play zaya so uh, so when you obviously search up zaya and everything you know I think I'm I'm I might be wrong, but I might be like I think I'm like one of the only people that actually put out like you know Zaya content. I think Zaya always does really really well on my channel. You know, every time I put out Zaya content, it always does quite well. Whether it's like an updated build guide or you know a breakdown video and things like that. You know, kind of I guess people know me for Zaya now in a way, which you know it, it can also work in other people's favor as well. You know, if you get good at a champion, if you and find something that's strong with someone or something like that, then you can produce content with that as well, and it can work in the same way. Um, the reason why I got so many views, I honestly don't really know, to be fair. <laughs> it's, it's it's a difficult one. I, YouTube's a very, very weird place. Um, it's populated at the moment with loads of clickbait titles, crazy, you know, pop-out thumbnails and things like that, which I don't really like to do most of the time, but... I know a few other people that, you know, do that and, you know, works in their way sometimes and things like that as well. Um, I think at the time, because Zaya, I believe when I put out, I put out that video, Zaya only just came out quite recently. Mm. Um, so at the time I was one of the first people to, to reach challenger and to get, you know, high in ranks with Zaya, which comes back to my point quite a while ago uh, that I made in the podcast, which is like, you know, if you can produce content first, it does help out as well. And it's has helped out in the past as well with, you know, other content creators and things like that. Um, I go back to like, you know, Hell's Devil, for example, who's a, who's a very, very popular, you know, Wild Rift YouTuber. He always produces the content as soon as it comes out. You know, as soon as it comes out, he stays awake because it's quite late normally in the EU. He stays awake. He does all his research. He does really, really well. Um, and he's always one of the first people that puts out, you know, a video about someone, you know, and if you can, if you can do it correctly, and if you can put a video out before anyone else, like I said before, like people will search for that video. And I think that's kind of the way the Zaya video works. You know, people wanted to look at high challenger gameplay of a new champion that came out. They wanted to see, you know, what it, what build I'm going as like the top 20 Zaya player and challenger and things like that. Um, and even though things like, you know, the average view per minute and things like that, um, like the average percent of view viewed and things like that is quite low on Wild Rift videos. I've actually found out quite recently um, with going through from, um, with working with um, Excel and looking at my, you know, my own videos and things like that. I think the main thing with views is like people want to look at like builds. They always want to look at builds. They want to yep. know what's the best. Um they always look at, you know, little things as well. Like maybe you explain the bills, like why it's important, things like that. And it's it's always good to, you know, go through your gameplay as well and explain, you know, certain situations in the gameplay because that's what that's what most people want at the end of the day. You know, people go onto YouTube, especially for Wild Rift to learn. And, you know, there, there are other things as well. You know, you can look at highlights. I always watch Wild Rift highlights as well, which are quite fun. Like you said, top five plays, which are always really, really fun to watch. Uh, but I think most people go onto YouTube for Wild Rift to learn champions and learn how to play a champion. Like you said, sometimes it might not work in lower elos, but it, it can help out because sometimes you might be going for a wrong build or, or something like that. I, I completely, what I'm mainly looking for is like, what do what do people think is going to be the top tier next right now? What items are going to be the strongest? Um, so, and it's, it's really, it's really to learn, especially when I'm learning on, on every, honestly, everything that I look up on YouTube is to learn. Um, so you you might be 100 percent right and as far as your like your average average viewer duration you know what it, looking at like what did my last video do bad that my current video did great um and that question actually segues pretty well into this one because you brought it up um xl esports what 
did it mean to you when you got sponsored by them? Like what, you know, was it something that you had been looking at for a long time? Were you like, okay, Excel, this is who I want to be sponsored by. Were you throwing out um, pitch, sales pitches to everywhere? And they're the ones that got back to you, but mainly what did it mean to you? Was it like, okay, I am finally making Treadway in this area? Um, bit of a backstory behind that, I guess. Uh, I guess, um, is that like ever since like Excel kind of gotten into like the LEC, the League of Legends Championship Series over in EU, like the PC competitive scene? Um, I've always been a fan of them, I guess you can say. Um, I've always like followed them. Um, I traveled to Germany a few times to watch them in the LEC as well. Um, you know, I got, I got, you know, I got to know the people and things like that. And, uh, and everything like that and you know I, i've been a fan from them for a while but i never actually you know when i when i first started doing youtube for wild rift and things like that i never expected myself and everything to kind of grow so quickly um and i i, I don't think anyone ever plans it to be honest i mean uh, people always say you probably hear this a lot from a lot of people but you know, you don't do content to then, you know, to, to make money. You don't do content to, you know, expect to join these, you know, organizations and things like that and everything. You you do it for fun at the end of the day. And like I said, I mainly did it to help out other people because I I had that knowledge of PC League of Legends and I brought that into Wild Rift and I was, you know, I was quite decent at PC League of Legends and I obviously hit Challenger a few times on Wild Rift. So I thought that I can bring, you know, my knowledge over to, um, from PC League, League of Legends over to uh, to Wild Rift. So obviously with that and um, with Excel and everything, it was just um, it was just you know they they wanted someone you know from the UK that made it wild made Wild Rift content and everything like that as well. And that's that's where I kind of came into it sort of thing. And then um, you know they, then they contacted me and everything about it. We had a call and everything like that. And, and you know since then I've been you know, making, you know, content on their YouTube channel and everything and streaming for them and everything like that as well. So it, it kind of, all, you know, it kind of all came in into play, really. I wasn't really, you know, planning it or anything like that. It wasn't really, you know, a plan for me. I don't think ever is for people, you know, a plan to join an organization or I wasn't really, you know, pitching to anyone or looking for anything or anything like that as well. Um, it's kind of one of the situations where, you know, if you grow out and if you get your content out there, you know, people will will start to you know recognize you and everything like that so uh, i think they're they're the main points but you know if, for me it's kind of a, a dream to you know join an organization and everything like that. i think it's a dream for any content creator to join join any organization but especially when you're you're an actual fan from an organization who's local as well um because their their offices are not really too far from me like their offices in london i live in london as well so uh yeah it's <laughs> It's kind of surreal, you know, thinking back and talking about it and everything like that as well. But yeah, that's that's kind of the the short story behind that. That's awesome, man. So it's like you followed them for a long time, and the stars happened to align in just the right way. That now you're, I guess, working for them, private contracting for them. I'm not sure how that works. Yeah, it's like it's just 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 content creator for them. So I like I make YouTube videos for them. I stream, you know, for them and everything like that as well. That's that's all it is. But yeah, did they did they also promote your videos is that how it works um i mean they like so i i make videos for them on their channel which obviously they promote and everything like that as well um so things like you know and it's kind of like an adaptation that i had to do as well um because at first i was kind of used to you know doing my own content and being kind of um you know kind of easy with my own content but i actually had to make quite a big adaptation into when i actually first did like my content with excel because with excel i kind of wanted to do um like a different approach sort of thing i didn't want to do like kind of similar to what i did on my channel so i've been doing that's, that's really interesting at uh some points i that's at some point i would like to get to that sponsorship point um but you know it's it's that's that's an end goal i do this because it gives me my uh, outlet to do the thing that I love doing the most uh, talking. So, <laughs> um, and that's something that I had noticed when I first got into this, I realized, Oh crap, there is another podcast out there. Shout out to the guys that attack Baron. 
um, Rygar and Fiasco, they do some pretty good content as well. Um, but looking down their track list and mine, I was like, oh crap, this is like the same content. Um, so this is where I kind of was like, I need to diversify what I do as opposed to what they do. Um, so I wanted to start doing interviews and I had reached out to a couple of people. Um, well, they, they reached out to me and, but I, I already had like ideas of who I wanted to talk to people that content that or people that made content that I consumed already. So you were like the first person that I reached out to. And then you got back to me like the next day and I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> so. I mean, I, I'm always the sort of person that, you know, I, I, I always like to, you know, talk about things and talk about my experience as well, because it, it might help other people as well. And like I said, I'm always the sort of person that likes to, you know, give back. I like to do, you know, giveaways and things like that. And I like to give back to the to the community and kind of thank, you know, people for, for kind of where I am today. Because at the end of the day, you know, if it isn't for people watching your streams or watching your videos or, you know, even in this instance, you know, what, watching your podcast and things like that, then, you know, you wouldn't really have the motivation to do it. So it's always nice to, you know, give back and, you know, kind of say, you know, thank you in a way. So that's why I like to come on to like these. Um, I've done interviews before on podcasts and things like that. It's actually my first podcast, funny enough. Uh, so <laughs> something a bit different for me, but, you know, I I'm always happy to, you know, you know, help out. I've even done some like casting here and there as well, which I'm given a try at the moment, which is quite interesting. Um, but I'm always, you know, happy to talk about all things and, you know, help people out the, the best that I can with whatever it may be, whether it be in like, you know, real life situation or even, you know, with things to do with Wild Rift as well. Yeah, absolutely. How was Pokemon Unite? Oh, that's a, I, I was not expecting this. <laughs> um, I, I did actually quite like it, to be fair. Um, me personally, I've never actually been a Pokemon fan. I've always been into more uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! And things mm. when I was little and everything. That's always been like my go-to. I've never actually been into to Pokemon. But in my opinion, I don't know if people will agree with me or not, but it's definitely a more casual MOBA compared to games like uh, Arena Valor, you know, Vainglory and, and Wild Rift as well. It's definitely more towards that sort of Pokemon audience where they might not know MOBAs, but they just want a, you know, a fun game to play. But I mean, personally, you know, I had quite a lot of fun with it. I played it on, on stream with, uh, with a bunch of viewers and things like that. And it is something a bit different. And it's quite nice to see, you know, other MOBAs come into the market as well. Um, but for me, it was, you know, a, li a little bit too casual. And I don't feel like there's that competitive sort of cutting edge you know difference between like you know maybe lower elo people to high elo, elo people like you know league of legends has i think it was definitely targeted at the younger and more casual players um i myself i i didn't like it that much i thought it was too much of a jumbled mi mi mix match of stuff like it wasn't your traditional MOBA destroy the towers. It was kind of like an old Dominion style um, yeah. League of Legends map. Um, so it, it was just really confusing to me on what the actual objective was, probably because I skipped the tutorial. <laughs> but, you know, I could definitely see my son loved playing it. So, um, but he also likes playing Wild Rift, but he's not, like, he's eight, so he's not that good. Yeah, I, I think it definitely has has a quite a big audience as well because it's Pokemon. And I think that that's the main thing about it is that, you know, anything that, you know, Pokemon make, to be fair, will always have a, a big audience, have a lot of people playing it and things like that. And it, it is something a bit different, as you said, but I think it's definitely a lot simpler than, than Wild Rift because it doesn't have, you know, these crazy objectives spawning at four minutes. It doesn't have any, like, crazy, you know, you know, a lot of champions or a lot of skills that you need to really learn or things like that. It's kind of, I don't know, for me, for me, it's kind of basic in a way, but I can see how, like, there might be a, a skill discrepancy for people that maybe, you know, might know, like, little things here and there and everything like that. But, I, I mean, I still enjoy playing it. I can see people, you know, really enjoying it because it's a Pokemon game. Um, but I, unfortunately for me, it wasn't really a, a, a thing that I will probably play in the future. It's surprising to hear you say Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I was a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! nerd. Going back and watching the shows, they were just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to 
Pokemon, I obviously, I think I enjoyed the original games because they were the first of their kind. I mean, that really took Nintendo's career, I think, to the or company to the next level. My favorite Pokemon game was Pokemon Snap. I just loved the idea of it. But yeah, I think Unite will be pretty interesting. And I think you're right. Most Pokemon things do pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I think even like you said, Pokemon Snap as well, which is something i mean honestly like pokemon could bring out you know any sort of game to do with pokemon it will do well to be honest because like i said it has that backing and it has that audience as well and i think because it's free to play as well it's always quite good it's on mobile it's on switch as well which is obviously quite a popular um console as well so i think you always have that player base and everything there's actually quite a few features on there which i'd like wild rift to bring into their sort of mobile uh, mobile as well uh things like uh login uh, codes which they have you know so every single time you join a lobby you have a login code so anyone can enter that code to join in your lobby instead of adding people and things like that um they have a lot more events as well on pokemon which i'd like to see on wild rift as well so there's things that you know wild rift can maybe learn from as well and it's always nice to have that you know sort of healthy competition there as well for for game developers so with with the idea of the lobby code, does that make it easier for you to play with your viewers? One hundred percent. Yeah, it makes it twenty times easier because at the moment I have to add people and then invite them, and there's no way for them to actually join the game at the moment. They have to like kind of you know I have to add them or do it like that. Sometimes I can like you can open up the lobby, but then like sometimes it might mean that random people that might join that, you know, you might not even know or might be not be on your stream. Cause they, what if it does have like a similar sort of feature? Um, I think it's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's where you can uh, search up and see what lobbies are open and things like that. And you can join them, but there's nothing really to specifically say like, cool, if you have this code, you can join sort of thing, which would be helpful for, obviously streamers and, and people like me because then i can be like cool if you enter this code you can join in my game i can play some games with viewers which i like to do on stream because it's quite nice to play with viewers and kind of chill for a bit where you don't really need to uh you know worry about <laughs> ranked all the time and everything like that that's actually a really good point i didn't think about it because on league of legends you would have or wild rift you would have to delete people from your friends list add people yep. as opposed to hey here's the code first come first serve yeah, it's, I think that's the most annoying thing is that like my friends list is full now. So every single time I try, I have to do viewer games. I have to delete people and then re-add them again and all this sort of stuff. And it's, it is quite annoying at times. But you know, maybe maybe something like that might happen in the future. Or maybe that you know, right games might come up with something better. You know, who who knows? I think like I said, think like I said before, the games it's still in early stages. So there's still quite a lot of things that can be added to the game. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I think that was it for the list of questions I had. I know this ran a little bit longer, but again, like I listen to a lot of a lot of content on podcasts. So I wanted to do something where we look a little bit more in behind the scenes of what people think as opposed to necessarily the primary focus being on the game. So this is definitely like an eye opening experience for me, the way that other people who approach the game from that might understand the back end, the back end more of technology and all that stuff would, how they would approach the game, how they would approach their content creating creations and what they would, you know, advise for other people who wanted to go down that role. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, for, for me, it's been definitely something a bit different for me as well. Cause like I said, I've never done a podcast before, but um, you know, it's always, I'm always happy to to talk about stuff and everything. I think it's quite nice to talk about as well sometimes because it's nice to sort of sit back, relax sort of thing and just talk about something that, well, for me anyway, is, is your job. And most people, it's their, you know, their passion and things like that as well. So it's nice to, you know, sit back, relax and just, you know, to kind of, kind of, you know, take a sit back and kind of reflect on, you know, the game and everything like that and, and what you think about it and everything as well. It's quite nice. I hope you had a good time. I, I definitely did. It was uh, it was nice talking to you. Before we head out, is there anything you want to plug, your social medias, Excel, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, you can find me on pretty much all social media uh, with uh, It's Stuart, which is I-T-Z-S-T-U-4-R-T instead of an A. Don't ask why. I just thought I'd put a number in there for some random, random reason. But I'm on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You can find me on my Twitch streams, everything like that as well um obviously xl esports as well you can follow them um you can um watch their youtube videos and everything as well because i do content over there <laughs> but yeah i mean th thanks for having me like i said it's my 
my first po- podcast and it's nice to sit down and talk about the game and you know I've, I've had a, I've had a really really good time to be fair it's been nice to you know talk about the game for once instead of playing it you know all the time <laughs> hopefully in the future we'll um, have more listeners and we'll come back on again and uh, maybe like three six months down the road see you know your thought processes and all that stuff how much you've changed as a creator and a person what you've gotten better at what you think has gotten worse what you've quit putting time and effort into just like what you've done to optimize your channel mm-hmm. yeah um, for sure I'm, I'm always happy to uh to come back on and and uh like i said thanks again for uh for inviting me it's been a good time absolutely um and before we go just to uh, for our north american players who don't really um understand the uh, i get i want to say the british talk uh the z uh he said zed but it's we, we would call it z that's just a uh, so it'd be ITZ um, instead of Z. I don't. That's not. <laughs> that's not me nitpicking. I just don't want like Z. Yeah, like, yeah. I people to misunderstand TV. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they like think it's the character. I mean, they'd probably find you, but I just wouldn't want uh, you know, miscommunication. Yeah, to yeah. Um, but I will link all of your socials down in the description. Um, and again, I appreciate having you on, man. Yeah. Thanks again. Appreciate it. All right. I will talk to you later, buddy. See ya. See ya.